The Evils of Smoking. Let me get one thing out of the way immediately. I am not a smoker, I've never been a smoker, and I detest everything about smoking. Well, maybe that's three things. I detest the way some smokers demonstrate a complete disregard for the people and the world around them. I sometimes have to sit here in this apartment while my neighbour downstairs smokes, only to have his poison drift up into my apartment and up into my nostrils. I don't want to smell his smoke any more than I want to smell his farts. And after a while, I can even feel my throat becoming sore. Look, I know when someone three doors down lights up a cigarette. But it's not only the smoke. It's the way smokers toss their butts on the ground. And unless you've never done this or never smoked within 10 metres of someone else, please don't claim to be a considerate smoker. There. Now that's off my chest. Despite all this, I find it extremely odd the way that smoking has been singled out for attention by legislators, at least in this country. Smoking, after all, is not illegal. Yes, it harms the health of the smoker, and frankly, I couldn't care less. Yes, it harms the health of others around them, and yes, I care about that. Yes, it represents a great burden on the public health system. But so do junk food and gambling and, above all, alcohol. So why then do smokers and the tobacco industry come under what seems to be such a disproportionate amount of pressure? I'm not sure I have the answer. Alcohol consumption is dangerous in both the short and the long term, both to the drinker and to those around them. It's at the root of many fatal vehicle accidents. It's the cause of many associated risky behaviours. It's the basis for a great deal of violence in the home and on the streets. Not to mention the direct health effects and costs. Yet alcohol is still freely available. It's still advertised. Alcohol consumption continues to be regarded generally in society, as demonstrated by its actions, if not its words, as harmless fun. Why this contrast with smoking? I honestly don't know. This reminds me in some ways of the gun debate and probably says a great deal about our society. It seems fairly clear that a large section of American society regards gun ownership not simply as a right, but as something completely normal. As normal as owning a car or a dog. People have cars, people have guns. This is part of the American culture. Life without guns would seem odd, if not somehow incomplete and unsatisfying. I suspect something similar is true of Australian attitudes towards alcohol. The consumption of alcohol is completely integral to Australian society at almost every level. To attack alcohol is, in a very real way, to attack what it means to be Australian. Sound a bit like attacking gun ownership in the USA? I think so. I imagine people in Turkey, where it's probably considered antisocial, for a man at least, not to smoke, would start a revolution if the government attempted directly or indirectly to restrict tobacco sales. Someone in a strict Islamic nation, at least in theory, would look in contempt at our consumption of alcohol. From their perspective, alcohol consumption here in Australia probably looks much like gun ownership in the USA looks to many of us. What's wrong with those people? Can't they see the problems that alcohol, substitute here guns or tobacco according to your preference, causes? It seems that in each culture or society there are some obviously dangerous and harmful behaviours which that culture not only tolerates but embraces. Societies appear, by and large, to be willing to pay the price that inevitably accompanies such activities. Why these, but not others? Who knows? To each their own poison, I suppose. Why tobacco has become the thing to hate in Australia remains unclear. I know why I hate it. 
But why society as a whole has turned so much against it remains somewhat puzzling to me.